today on Ask This Old House. This homeowner wants to paint his entire chimney white. But first, I'm going to show him how to repair some damage. That's good. All right. What we're going to do here is we're going to cause a little dust when we take this brick out. A correctly installed drip edge is one of the most important parts when installing a roof. I'll show you why. So same materials as the second example, but way more effective just because they're installed properly. Absolutely. And how often should I change my water heater? Should I drain it? Should I change the anode rod? I'll answer some of the common questions I get about water heaters. For projects around the house, HomeAdvisor helps find local pros to do the work. You can check ratings, read customer reviews, and book appointments with pros online at HomeAdvisor.com. HomeAdvisor is proud to support Ask This Old House. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to Ask This Old House. We have got the experts ready to answer questions about your house, so keep them coming. We'd love to hear from you. Good morning, Mario. Good morning, Mark. Hey, How you doing? Kevin. All right. What are you guys working on today? Well, we just got an email from a homeowner, and they want to paint the fireplace white. Painting brick, huh? That is an irreversible decision for the most part. You okay with that? I'm okay, okay. But 10 years ago, if you were asking me that, I wouldn't do it. But the trend is so hot right now, I don't mind doing it. So you're going to go with the trend and uh, help them out? Definitely. Okay. Well, I have a similar technique that I use on the outside, not the inside, but Look at this, Morrow. See that chip? Yep. If Morrow tries to paint that, it'll shine through like crazy. So I think I should go, take that brick right out, replace it, and get it ready for you. I agree. Just fix that, that chip, and I'll come right up to you, and I'll do my job. All right. So you fix it, then you paint it. Absolutely. I love it. Hey, Mark. Hey, Bryce. Thanks so much for coming over. All right. Thanks for having me. Great lake house. I know, it's a beautiful location, right? Wow. We recently had a newborn within the past year, and uh, this came up kind of earlier than we expected, but you know, we couldn't resist this view. Right, okay. So we actually done quite a bit of work on the house. Uh, we renovated the entire second floor. With a little baby in the house? With a little baby, quite a bit of work, yeah. All right. The email that you sent me had something to do with a fireplace, correct? It did, yeah. Come on in, let All me right. show you where it is. So Mark, this is our fireplace. Uh, we were looking at actually painting the entire fireplace white, uh, but the reason I'd emailed you is there's a little chip out of the corner of the brick oh, yeah. right here. Okay. All right, well, you have a nice hard brick here. The problem with the hard brick is they're a little fragile in the face. So anytime you bump it inadvertently, yeah. you may end up with a chip, which is probably what happened here. I showed your email tomorrow, and we both agree that once you paint this, that chip is still going to bleed through. Okay. So what you and I have to do is take that brick out and replace it. All right, sounds good. All right, let's get some tools and do it. Okay, are we nice and tight? I think so. All right, great, because what we're gonna do here is we're gonna cause a little dust when we take this brick out. Okay. You can see that I have a HEPA vac, which sucks up all the dust. We have a grinder, which is adapted to that HEPA vac, okay. and that's what's gonna suck in all the dust. So now we've alleviated the tension on the two bed joints and we're going to go after the head joint with a hand chisel.
So I want to make sure we clean this out because mortar doesn't stick to mortar very well, but it sticks to brick. So we want to make a good spot for the brick to lay. All right, so this is the brick that I came up with. As you can see, the most important part, the face, nice and smooth to match. Color is good, but look at this. Perfect fit. Nice fit, right? Yeah. So all we need now is our mortar. Why don't we go outside and make it? All right. So this is our type N mortar. Since we don't need a whole lot, we're just going to mix it by trowel in this small tub. All right, Bryce, why don't you add some water to that? A little bit at first, easy to put in, but hard to take out. Just another splash, Bryce. Great. All right, that looks great. Let's go. Awesome. And we want to make sure that we match the existing bed joints so that our brick will sit the way it's supposed to. Okay, now what we want to do is make sure we get this head joint nice and full. And because we're putting a new brick in, this is going to be our last opportunity to get that head joint. All right, I'm also going to back butter this brick and slip it in. I'm going to wiggle it in, and I'm in. So we did the bed joint with mortar. We did the head joint. We did the head joint over here. Now what we're going to do is this top bed joint. Now, I know it has to be full, so I want to make sure I stuff it really, really well with my very small tuck pointer. So now that my bed joints and head joints are filled, I'm going to run the joint over with my concave jointer just to match the rest of the fireplace. All right, so give this brick a little bit of time to set up, but I'll let Morrow know that you're ready for paint. All right. Looks good. Thanks, All Mark. Right. You got it, Bryce. Richard, we asked folks for their water heater questions, and <laughs> boy, did they have a lot of questions. Well, everybody's got a water heater. Well, and apparently everyone's got a question about yeah. them, too. Yeah. I went through them, and it looks like the most popular question um, had to do with when do I get rid of my water heater? Right. Because they buy a new house, or they look at their water heater, and they realize it's 5, 10, 15 right. years old, and they're all terrified. When's it going to leak? Right. Yeah. So a couple of different types of common water heaters in America in the tank type variety. One's electric. It has a cover plate here and here cover over the electrical elements that stick into the water. A gas water heater has a gas valve right here with a flue pipe right here. On any of these tanks, though, there's a rating plate. And you go here and you can see what size the tank is, what the model number is, and the date of manufacture. You can see this was 2013. So then the question is, when do you change it? So these things are glass lined steel tanks. Oh, yeah. And they're going to fail, usually, 7, 10, 12 years. Right. So you get to that 10 or 12 year period, you got to say, okay, how much risk do I want? And the other thing is, many people contemplate going to a different type of method like a tankless or instantaneous water heater. Right. In this case, there is no big storage tank. Right. It sort of um, heats it up instantaneously. Right. So with, with that, if you're going to have a water heater that leaks and all of a sudden flood in your basement, you're not going to slow down to take the time to change it to this thing because this the, the tankless needs bigger gas piping and it's a lot more work. You're just going to change that water heater so you'd be locked into the same cycle. So a part of it is sort of, you know, how risk averse you are and yeah. where is it, right? Yeah. Because in my house, it's a concrete floor That's in an right. unfinished basement. Right. I don't want it to leak, That's but right. then I'll be okay. Right. Someone has it upstairs on the first it, floor. It can cause 
total catastrophe in our house. Okay, let's talk about um, extending the life because people are probably not going to want to pay to change it if they don't have yep. to, but would like to keep it going. Well, this glass line steel tank, it used to have a glass lining in here that was perfect. And it used to have a rod right here called an anode rod. This is a sacrificial rod made out of magnesium or aluminum. And it might have looked like this at one time. Mm -hmm. And that sits down inside right here. And it becomes the sacrificial piece that the aggressive water wants to eat. So it will eat this, turn instead this of the glass into line that, steel tank. instead of that right, right. there. And that can so extend the life. You can, yeah, so the, this thing can be replaced. So you, they're made so that it can be bent and put in. Now, if somebody was to come along and replace this anode every two to three years, you could make a glass line steel tank last for, pick it, 20 or 30 oh, years. Oh, wow. Okay? Right. But nobody does it. Okay? <laughs> okay? <laughs> and what happens also is you might want to change the anode rod, but if you don't change it in the first two or three years of its operating life, this might fuse in here where you can't even get it out of the top of the tank. I got you. Okay? okay. But this is something interesting. You could make a tank last a long time. I think there's a, I don't know if it's a rumor or a myth you tell us, this idea that if I periodically drain the hot water heater, that will extend its life okay. too. Is that true? Well, a water heater is a perfect collector of calcium and magnesium, and so it can sit right down in the bottom right here. So, so a couple of tips. Every water heater has a drain at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So if you were going to drain it down, what I would do is I would turn the water off, open up the drain. Now, if you do that, what I would do is also turn this on just a couple of times. So think about what you're doing. You're going to sort of push and sort of spray it down through this dip tube to sort of wash some of that stuff down the drain. Oh, I see. If you didn't do it that, that way and you left this on, you would actually just take water right out of the bottom of this dip tube and it would go right to the drain. It would leave all the the uh, buildup in the bottom of the tank. Gotcha, okay. Uh, if I come home um, and I find that I've got a leak coming out of my hot water tank, I'm worried that it's gonna blow and get worse. Yeah. First thing I should do? Well, this is the biggest panic in most people's lives. You know, when these water heaters go, they, they do not go like an eggshell being smashed on the ground. It's usually a pinhole leak, so the control is important. There's a shutoff valve, there's a cold water line and a hot water line. You gotta get and turn the, turn the water heater off the cold water side, mm -hmm. but n and now over time, the pressure will relieve through the pinhole leak. Yep. But you still have water in the tank and you have water up inside the house. Right. So put a hose on the drawer off right here and open it up and just relieve the pressure, and that'll just give you time to exhale until you can call somebody to replace the water. Perfect. All right, good information. And, and one thing, um, if we want to worry about why people are so concerned about the water heaters, can you stop scaring them? <laughs> this thing's terrifying. Look, this, no, this is what it looks like inside. Sorry. <laughs> Tommy, you got the roof out, huh? <laughs> I sure do. I want to show you a demonstration on how water can come off the roof and rot the underside of your roof. I know that you are a stickler for keeping the house dry because you've seen the damage water can do. Oh, it's amazing. And it can attack all your fascia board, your sidewalls, and even underneath the roof shingles. Mm -hmm. Let me show you right here. I've got a perfect example of a shed. Yeah. All right. And on the leading edge of the shed, there is a, no drip edge, but if you take a close look at the sheathing underneath the shingle, you can see how the sheathing is black, the structure is black, and the sidewall eventually is going to get black. So you can tell it's wet even though the shingles overhang the sheathing in the edge there. Right. Once the roof gets wet, the water comes down over the edge and gets sucked into the sheathing and it will come right up the wall and eventually rot all of this. This has got to be back four or five inches to rot right there. Right. I mean, it's sort of inconceivable to think that the water will run uphill. That works on surface tension. Let me show you. I've set up a little demonstration here. So surface tension being what? That the water will actually stick to surfaces? Yep. And it'll stick to the surface and it'll roll over the edge of the surface and then get drawn back up. All right. Okay. So You've got a prop. What's, uh... I've got a prop here. I've got three different props. This is the first one. This is similar to what we see over there in the picture that I showed you. So we've got the shingles close to the edge of the sheathing and right. the sheathing with no drip edge. The water's going to come down. Now you have to wait just a little bit. There it is. See it? Oh, wow. That didn't take it's... long at all, huh? See how it's getting drawn right under the sheathing? So it's getting pulled right to the sheathing. Yep. It's also getting pulled literally backwards and then running down the face of the fascia. Right. The wetter the wood gets, the higher the water's going to go. Hmm. Okay, so now if you put on a metal drip edge, yep. and now this is a metal drip edge right here. 
Now there's different sizes and different widths. This is just a standard eight inch drip edge. And you see that little bend on the bottom right here? I do. That's a kicker. And that's so that if water comes off the edge and gets sucked back in, the water droplets will fall away from the fascia board. So if we put this over this scenario right here, which is what you've got on the second um, prop, right. it should work? It will work a little better, but it's not gonna work right. Oh man. It's wrapping itself in, hitting the drip edge, it's still wetting the fascia board. There, I mean, there's still a lot of water just running down the fascia. Yep. Now, because the overhang isn't far enough out, yep. it's gonna shorten the life of the fascia board. So the drip edge is definitely doing something, mm -hmm. um, but it's not that effective. So let's see what it does on the third one. Okay, so now on the third one, I've taken the, the drip edge and I've created a gap, the thickness of my finger. Mm -hmm. I've also overhung the shingles three eighths to a half an inch. Which is more than in the second example. Right. So right off the bat, the shingles are overhanging so much, it doesn't even pull it back to the drip edge much. Right, it won't drop. If it does get blown in there from wind, but it's really not gonna be surface tension, it should start to stick, but it will fall off. Nothing on the fascia? Nothing on the fascia board because we're out. And it's very important that the leading edge of the roof is an inch and a half to an inch and three quarters away from the fascia board. So same materials as the second example, but way more effective just because they're installed properly. Absolutely, and that's a good way to keep your fascia board dry and the underside of your roof dry. And you know what? This application is the same whether you run up the rake boards. Nice. Good info, Tommy. Thank you. My pleasure. Wow, Mark really did a good job here. Mortar set and dry, and you want to paint the fireplace, right? We do. We actually want to paint the fireplace white. Okay. But we were thinking of going more of an antique type of look. We still want to maintain the character of the brick. All right, cool, we can do this. Uh, and how much of the brick that you want to see, how much of the white that you want to see it? We're thinking about 25% brick and then maybe 75% white. All right, that's not a problem. But I gotta tell you one thing, once the paint goes on, it's almost impossible to take it off. Yeah, no, we understand and we definitely want to go forward. You sure? Definitely. Positive? Yes. All right, great. First thing we gotta do, protect the working area. Okay. okay, sounds great. Let's make it straight as possible and keep it away from the fireplace a little bit. Well, this is the paint that we're gonna use. Nothing special about that. It's white, it's flat, and a water base. Uh, and the key to get the whitewash look is to use water base because we're going to add water into that. Okay. Well, so that doesn't mess up the quality of the paint? Actually, that's going to help us. The brick is really absorbent. It's going to suck up the water and help us to get the whitewash look. Okay. Well, so how much water do you add? Well, we're going to start eyeballing by 50-50. Okay. And as we go, we make a little adjustment here and there. Now, with my paint sticker, we're gonna mix this paint. Well, this looks pretty good. It kinda looks like the consistency of milk. All right, let's try that and see what we got. All right, I'm gonna start from this corner. Okay. And as I'm gonna give it a couple strokes, I want you to come right behind me and dab with your rag. So what do you think about that? I don't know, I think I'm wiping a little too much. I, I kind of like this look right there. All right, so good. So what we're gonna have to do is just go light with your dab. Okay. Right? Don't take off so much. Let me put some more paint so we can start over again. I'm just gonna be light. So you just go light, dab light. Yeah. Just give him some random pattern. It's gonna give us a natural look. I'm not trying to cover the whole brick. So you can do your work right after me. I like that. What do you think? Yeah, it looks great. That's the look we want to get it. I'd rather have the paint too light than heavier because we can always have more paint put on. Well, the new repair mortar is darker than the existing one. 
I'm gonna use a spray paint to blend it. Well, paint is dry, fireplace looks good to me. What do you think? I think it looks amazing. Much better improvement over the last version. Perfect. Everything looks so beautiful here. A lot of work we put on. Yeah. So what do you think? A little update down here. Well, I think maybe we'll replace the tile uh, with a slate or a granite, and then probably update the inside with a gas insert. Oh, I like that. It's gonna make my job and Mark's looks much better and it's safer for the little one. Definitely is. Thank you for all the hard work, nice. Mauro. Thank you very much. Got yourself a happy homeowner, Mauro. Nice yeah. job. Absolutely. That came out nice. It did. So you've got a different technique to show us. I do. Uh, similar techniques, but I like to use mine on the exterior. It's masonry-based, not paint-based. Would you paint exterior brick? I wouldn't do paint because paint will stay on the surface, will create a film, and will block any moisture trapped behind the brick trying to move out. And that water's going to move out eventually, so you're going to blow off the paint. Absolutely. So what's your special mix? So the mix that I use is a slurry mix, which is basically Portland cement, a lot of lime, mm. and just water. Nice. So you're making your own, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A couple scoops of Portland and lime with a little bit of water is a lot cheaper than a gallon of paint, right, Maro? I guess so. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, this looks pretty good. Now I'm just gonna switch to my brush. And just go to the wall like this. Yeah, it's almost like you're putting That's a it. stucco coat on. It looks like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's thick. It's thick. But again, this is made to weather off. I'm now gonna switch to my water bucket. So that's similar to Mauro dabbing the paint off. That's what I meant when I said there were similar techniques, but a different result. That's it right there. You get that yeah, variation right, right there. there. There's the variation, yeah. And because this is outside, not inside like Mauro's fireplace, this will continue to fade and wear? That's right. So we don't care how sloppy we are when we're applying because the weathering over the next few years is what's going to really give us what we want. Cool. We'll help you out to get the finish that you're looking for. Exactly. All right. Two good techniques, guys. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Keep your questions coming. We'd love to hear from you. So until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Mario Henrique. And I'm Mark McCullough. For Ask This Old House. Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.